Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for Ninjago Faceoff, episode 17. Today we're comparing Ninjago villains, Moro and Harubi, and deciding which villain has the better backstory. These two villains specifically are Ninjago's tragic villains. They have very emotional backstories that explain why they became evil. These two characters have a lot of similarities, which makes for an interesting comparison in my opinion. And specifically, we're looking at their origin stories. Moro's backstory is definitely one of the most iconic Ninjago scenes, and for good reason. I feel like this was a great introduction scene to Moro, but it also really fleshed out Wu's history. Having Moro as Wu's forgotten first student made him feel more significant as a character. But anyways, the way this flashback is initially presented is with a very hopeful tone. Moro is an orphan, but he's taken in by Wu and discovered to have powers. That's what's really powerful here. Moro basically comes from nowhere, but is given an opportunity to be something greater. But eventually this ends up being his own undoing because this idea of him being the Green Ninja basically corrupts him and leads him to his downfall. Moro is not supposed to be the Green Ninja, but he thinks he is. And so this arrogance and ego eventually causes him to go bad. And later Moro dies in the caves of despair while trying to defy destiny. Moro's backstory works so well because of how haunting it is. Again, it's also very tragic. And I think it's a nice cautionary tale about the destructive power of ego. Unlike Ruby's backstory, Moro is really impacted by other events but it's more so his own character flaws which take him down. This nicely sets him up as a delusional, yet determined villain in the present day. The other villain for today is of course Ruby. Ruby was, prior to season 15, one of Ninjago's best villains, and her backstory is a large reason why. This is the first Ninjago villain whose backstory takes place during the show itself. Ruby's parents are killed by the Great Devourer in the season 1 finale. This is an event that we as viewers are already familiar with, and it establishes a really nice connection between these two seasons. This flashback also showed that even when the heroes do win, which is pretty much almost in Ninjago, there are consequences and people are hurt. It showed an unseen, obviously more tragic side of Ninjago seasons that we've never seen before. This idea works so well with the darker tone Ninjago's Oni trilogy was trying to establish. It also paved the way excellently for season eight's perfect villain. A villain who's just a normal human, but was Ninjago's most successful villain ever. And a villain who's, from her own vantage point, a product of the ninja's failures. This backstory doesn't involve crazy superpowers or banishments, but its mature tone and simpler concepts make it so powerful, and such a core part of the Oni trilogy. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. While I love Moro's backstory too, Ruby's definitely takes the win here. Ruby's backstory was such a game changer for Ninjago, it was a really creative part of season 8, and while I love Moro's backstory too, Harubi's backstory I feel left a far bigger impact. Well that's about all for this video guys, thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed, Please leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone different you know. If you have ideas for the next Face Off episode, please comment them below. And of course, let me know whose backstory you prefer. And I'll see you guys next time.